There's another thing that needs to be added to this, but I want you to help me with it. So here's a figure, and this figure is it's a greenhouse project with Scott's pine. And what they did is they grew the Scott's pine and they did three things. They made them high nitrogen, all the nitrogen the plants could, could use. They made it low nitrogen where they were stressed for nitrogen. That's the darkened symbols are high nitrogen. The open ones are low nitrogen. And then they inoculated the pots with two different fungi species. They're down here, Suelus and Thelophora. And then the observation was, with inoculation, you see a depletion in the N15 of the needles. This depletion is exacerbated and of a higher magnitude in a low nitrogen environment. So does anybody have a guess as to what this is? I'll give you a hint. When I took plant ecology in the 80s, this was, go ahead. Uh, those are mycorrhizal. Yep, both of those species are ectomycorrhizae or ectomycorrhizal fungi. So one big thing that we've learned over, the li over my lifetime has been that we thought associations between fungi and plants were kind of this specialized sort of thing that we observed in a few plants, and then we started to look and it turns out they're everywhere. So most plants have some kind of fungal association. And having the fungal hyphae get your nutrients fractionates, okay? And it fractionates in a bit of a weird way. Um, this is sort of pictures from that study. So on this side is there's no mycorrhizal association. This side they are, they're, they're ectos. So what that means is they build a sheath around the root. Hyphae go out, they're acquiring nutrients and other stuff, bringing it back and then the plants take it up. There's also endomycorrhizal associations or sometimes called arbuscular. And it has a much tighter relationship. The hyphal fung fungi grow into the roots and have a direct connection with cells. And those two different forms of mycorrhizal actually fractionate quite a bit different. In both cases, the fungus itself, when it picks up that nutrient from the substrate in the soil, it's an enriching event. So if you go out and you sample fungal hyphae, you get something that's enriched. When it transfers it to the plant, if it's endomycorrhizal, it very annoyingly brings it right back to about what the soil nitrogen was with, uh, and it depletes, it's de what it delivers is depleted. If it's ectomycorrhizal, it depletes so much that it actually becomes more depleted than soil nitrogen. So this, you don't really need to worry about this, this is from the original papers that tried to build a framework for what was going on within that whole system. If you're a mycorrhizae freak, I'm happy to talk to you more about it, but it's not that important. The important thing is when you're looking at isotope data, and you think you have a mycorrhizal player in the system, an endo and an ectomycorrhizal are gonna behave quite a bit differently. So you're gonna be able to see the activity of the ectomycorrhizal pretty easy, because it does this big depletion event, and the endomycorrhizae you're not gonna be able to see as well. So we're gonna to wanna to add this, because even though our assimilation process is only this fractionation that's only a couple of per mil, if it's ectomycorrhizal, it's bigger. So if we're ecto, it can be as big as eight to 10 per mil. And endo is about zero to 3.5 per mil. Okay, so it's a big effect. And so what we're seeing here is the, these are ectomycorrhizal fungi and they're fractionating and you're seeing a depletion in the foliage, okay? So two big points here. One is a plant can be a phytometer for what's going on below ground. Often leaves can give us information and plucking leaves off of plants is a lot easier than digging up and purifying mycorrhizal fungi and trying to do process rates within the soil, okay? All right, questions? Yeah, so, so you said ecto, I can't really read that. Ecto is eight to 10, and yep. goes zero to 35. 3.5. Oh, 3.5, that's okay. 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 
Microbes. So, you're saying fractionation doesn't really occur in the uptake because nitrogen is usually limiting, so it's all used up. If in this study, do they add so much where kinetic fractionation would take place? Probably. I'm going to go over that in some detail and about where that breakpoint is. Um, but first, 